going on guys? Welcome back for another video. So today we're going to be doing a little maintenance on the Raptor. Today we're going to be installing a manual cam chain tensioner on the Raptor. Right now I just have the stock one, um, which is an automatic one. But first off, before we get started, I do want to say thank you guys for a thousand subscribers. I just put that clip in before this video. So just wanted to say thank you to all my subscribers. Um, you know, it really means a lot. It helps the channel. It encourages me to keep making these videos for you guys and everything like that. So just wanted to say thank you for uh, hitting a thousand subscribers. Really means a lot. Thanks guys. So the reason we're installing this manual cam chain tensioner instead of uh, going with our stock one is um, the stock ones that are, I guess, automatic are known to fail. Um, you know, they're just not as reliable, especially in cold weather. You know, metal has different characteristics um, at different temperatures. It's really not a big deal. I have a manual one on my Daytona. I really like it. It's just, I don't know. I just kind of like having the manual cam chain tensioner uh, versus the automatic stock one. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is locate our stock one, which is right here. This is the, I guess, timing chain side of the engine. Um, you know, for example, on my Daytona, it's on the right side of the engine. So every engine is, of course, different in that aspect. One of the main things you want to do before you uh, loosen this, or I guess change your cam chain tensioner out, is make sure that your engine is at um, top dead center, meaning where your piston is at the topmost point in its stroke. And the reason we want to do that is to make sure that our piston isn't going to move at all once we loosen um, our cam chain tensioner, because if that happened, um, you know, it could potentially uh, mess up your timing and that's, you know, a, a pretty expensive issue. So first of all, let's go ahead and take off what's called, I guess, our timing cover right here. That's going to expose um, our cam and then we can tell uh, that our piston's at top dead center. Let's, so, uh, let's go ahead and do that first. So for this particular engine, which is my Raptor 700, it's just two 8mm bolts. Um, that I need to take off, that'll expose what I need to uh, look at here. Once these bolts out, this cover should pop off. There shouldn't be any oil in there, anything like that, so we don't really have to worry about that. All the oil should be near the bottom, so this should just pop off. So there we go. There is our cam and there's our timing chain right there. So obviously this is kind of a really important area. So when you're doing this, make sure that you, you, know, you have relatively clean hands. Make sure that nothing goes in this part because anything goes in here, your engine's toast. So just, just kind of be aware of that. All right, so now that we have our cover up, what we're trying to do is actually line this line up right there. If you guys can see that line on the sprocket, we have to line that up with top dead center, which is this right here, that little bump on the top of the case there. So to do that, we have to do one other thing. To do that, we have to loosen up these two, I guess, covers right here. So we're gonna wanna take these off. I don't know, these are pretty big Allens. Um, they, they're just plastic, they should come right off. Um, and that's gonna expose um, our stator marker, I guess you could say, and then the bottom of our crankshaft that we need to turn in order to line them up. So in order to get our engine to top dead center, we have to uh, take a 22 millimeter socket right here and in here, uh, I hope, yeah, you guys can see that. Rotate this nut, which is gonna rotate our, our cam and our chain and everything in here. And then we should see a line pop up in our lookout window down here as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. Top dead center is right here. And you should kind of feel it click over. It gets a little easier, it gets a little harder. So what you guys saw me do there was just rotate basically the whole engine to top dead center. We can see that our line on our uh, sprocket there is now lined up with uh, the marking on our case. And down at the bottom here in our, I guess, stator window right here, we can also see that there's a marking on, there you guys can see it. There's a marking on, I guess, that flywheel or sprocket in there. And that is also lined up in the window. So now we know we're at top dead center and we can start the rest of the process. So the next thing we're gonna do is remove our automatic, or I guess stock cam chain tensioner by these two bolts right here. Since we're at top dead center, it's I guess safe, uh, so to speak, to do this. Any other time, uh, you know, you could risk screwing up your timing, timing in your engine, like I said before. And if you guys aren't familiar how these work, basically it's just a spring actuated um, plunger. Instead of a manual one, that you know screws in and out it's just a spring in there that's putting pressure on 
uh, the tensioner mechanism in there to tension your cam chain. So once we have our two bolts out, this should basically just pop out and there will be a gasket that comes with it as well. Make sure to remove that. Mine kind of got torn, so looks we're at the point of no return now. And here's the stock cam chain tensioner removed. It looks perfectly fine. I'm just kind of, uh, I guess, picky. Um, I like doing things my way and manually, so I'm gonna install the manual one. Um, but anyways, if, if you guys were wondering what a, a stock one looks like, this is what it looks like. And um, I did take a picture of what it looks like inside here. It's kind of hard to see in there. Um, so I'm gonna throw that up on the screen right now and you guys can see kind of what is going on um, inside your engine. So the next step we're going to want to do is take a look at our stock cam chain tensioner and our new one and that'll kind of give us an idea of how much we need to screw in this bolt. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of match the two up. That'll give me a good starting point. So this setting should be a good starting point. So we're going to go ahead and just insert this into our engine here and screw it on using the same two bolts that the old one came out with. All right guys, so we got both bolts in here. We're just gonna go ahead and tighten them up. And then we're gonna go ahead and, of course, reinstall all our covers and everything like that. Let's go ahead and put our plugs back in. And of course, let's not forget our timing cover. This has a rubber seal on it, so just make sure it's seated nicely and then, of course, you know, tighten down your two eight millimeter bolts So once we have our cover replaced and our bolts tightened down, pretty much the only thing left to do is tension our tensioner. So what we're going to do is back this second nut out all the way and then use this first nut to you know, screw in the bolt until it's basically firm, until you feel some resistance in the screw. And I'm feeling some resistance right about there. And that's really just a good starting point. You won't know until you start your engine up, but it should be safe to start your engine up once it's, uh, once it's tensioned and it, you can feel some resistance in the screw. So then of course, tighten your second nut up. That prevents um, the bolt from moving once uh, you have the correct position set. All right, guys, there we have it. It's all finished up. Should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and start it up here in a second, but just wanted to thank you guys one more time for a thousand subscribers. If you guys have any comments or questions, you can definitely leave them below, and I will see you guys next Saturday for another video.